All right, guys, what is going on? Welcome in. So, look, as we all know, football's back, right? Football's back, and we could not be more excited. Our New York Jets are finally playing some meaningful football, and it's going to be against uh, Dan's, my buddy Dan's Buffalo Bills. And uh, mm. wanted to bring him on because nobody knows the Bills like him. So, uh, Dan, how you doing, bro? Hey, Ian, you know, I am doing fantastic. I definitely appreciate you having me on. I believe this is my second time on your channel. Yeah, um, I'm, so I think we did like a way too early projection for this game or like how the Jets were going to stack up against the Bills in 2020. But I mean, like now, like we finally have enough to talk about. So, so I'm actually really excited to dive into this. Yeah, I know. It's uh it's glad it's, it's awesome that the season's finally here. You know what I mean? And I actually mentioned in my preview video, like a lot of the things that the bills have like in their favor, the GM, the, you know, the entire coaching staff, like, I mean, head yeah. coach McDermott, but even the coordinators are awesome. Dayball and uh, Frazier and then trickling down to the uh, players. I mean, you guys have such a nice young core of just franchise players that you guys can, you know, build around for years. And it just must be an awesome feeling. You know what I mean? Yeah, dude. No, like honestly. And I mean, I hate to sound biased, but I mean, I think if any fan base in the entire world deserved it, it would have to be Buffalo. I mean, we went through years and years of incompetent front office decisions, a carousel of coaches, a carousel of quarterbacks. I mean, it's such a relief to know that your biggest problem for 15 to 20 years has been solved and now you can look forward. So, I mean, it's, it's finally nice to have some confidence in that front office, man. That's for sure. Yeah, for sure, man. So when we take a look at Sunday's game, right. Uh, yeah. Looking at the matchup jets at Buffalo, obviously uh, I think no fans are going to be at the game. I get, I mean, I look at the rot, the bills roster, obviously on paper and it's stacked, right. Mm -hmm. Wide receivers, running backs, QB, O-line, the whole, like the whole gamut, the whole thing is just absolutely loaded. But yeah. from your experience watching the bills, knowing the bills, reading about them, like every second of the day, yeah. what is the bill's biggest weakness in your opinion? Right now, man, I would have to say it is either our, um, so our offensive line or not being able to stop the run. Now, I mean, let me start off with the offensive line this off season, bro. I was praying to whatever God people pray to that we were to add some additions to our offensive line, but we essentially did nothing besides getting Brian Winters. And as you told me on my video, on my channel, he's trash and he's a penalty machine. So essentially the Buffalo bills are really relying on chemistry and continuity in hopes that since the majority of our starters from last year are going back to that line, that that's going to be the secret sauce and not going out and making those big moves on a big offensive tackle or guard. So I'm really interested to see what's going on, especially at that right guard situation. We lost out on John Feliciano to a pectoral injury. He's out until week six. And now we don't know whether or not that Winters is going to be protecting Allen's, um, uh, yeah, and so backside or whatever. So, I mean, we're definitely going to see what's going on with that. And then also the ability to stop the run last year uh, was super happy with the way that the Buffalo Bills performed on defense. But if I had to pick out one weakness on defense, it was the ability to stop the run. Um, granted, I think the reason why we got such a bad rep from that was is the fact that when we played the Philadelphia Eagles, they just ran all over us. And I think that that destroyed our stats of being able to stop the run and that equaled out for Matt Milano not being in the game at that time. So I'd say my biggest two concerns would probably have to be in the trenches, man. And so the offensive line and the ability to stop that run. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's interesting that you bring that up because in the preview video, in my preview video that I just posted, uh, I talked a little bit about feeding Le'Veon Bell the football, whether it's not only just, you know, handing the football off to him, but just feeding him the football in the flats, sending him out on like little screens, bubble screens, check downs, just getting Bell involved. Because looking back at week one of last season, Le'Veon Bell did his thing in the first three quarters uh, of the game. And then Adam Gase, for whatever reason, just completely went away from him. So it's interesting that you say that the inability to stop the run is going to be, your, one, you know, one of your biggest concerns uh, yeah. as we head into Sunday. Uh What's the bit that would, I mean, 
I just feel like the Bills are, are like solid at every position. So it could be yeah. a little bit of like a redundant question, but what's the Bills' biggest strength? Like that you feel as though the Jets just have to steer clear from, whether it's like a player yeah. or a philosophy or something like that. Yeah, man, I would have to say our secondary. And like I – like say, for example, that I was the offensive coordinator for the New York Jets, I would be absolutely terrified of passing the ball. Not unless that you can go on ahead and establish Le'Veon Bell early and then establish play action. I feel like that there's going to be a, a lot of mismatches from the Jets receivers right against our secondary by himself. I mean, especially with Trey White. And then we have a very slept-on safety core within Jordan Poyer and Micah Hyde, who are absolute animals. And then the question of whether or not that Josh Norman is going to be able to bounce back and actually go back to at least a form of what he was in 2015, since he was able to reconnect with his old defensive coordinator and Sean McDermott. So the biggest strength hands down, and in my opinion, is going to be the Bills secondary. The Bills secondary. Okay. Um, I would say – you know, thinking about the way the Bills roster is kind of constructed, thinking about how the Jets have had success in the past and now moving forward, I would say that the Jets are going – they're going to have to beat you guys with a quick short passing. Yeah. I feel like if it's going to be like a shootout, the Jets are going to be in big trouble. Like, we, I feel like we can't afford to push the ball consistently without begging for turnovers. I mean, your safety core is really good with Poyer and Hyde. Tredavious White's a top three corner in the league. And, uh, I mean, that cornerback number two spot, it's kind of up in the air. I mean, I know you yeah. mentioned Josh Norman. Is he for sure going to be the starting second corner? And so I'm thinking it is, man. I mean, really, at the end of the day, it could be a toss-up between him and Levi Wallace. But oh, okay. Yeah, I forgot about Wallace. Yeah. Yeah. So, like, I mean, like, Norman, he missed out on the majority of training camp. He was active for the first three games. But – just the way that Sean McDermott was interviewed a couple of days ago and he was just clamoring on the fact, just like, hey, and so I'm not worried about Josh because I'm familiar with him and I know him. I think that the success that Norman brought to McDermott back when he was the defensive coordinator for Carolina in 2015 is going to be too much for him to pass up. So I'm almost willing to bet that Norman's going to be lining up opposite of Trey White on Sunday. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, that's a fair point yeah. for sure. But Here's the big question, right? Here's the here's the title of the video. How can the New York Jets go into Buffalo and beat your Bills Sunday? Got it, man. And so like I believe that I touched on it a little bit already, but I think that you guys um from a from an offensive standpoint, I think that you need to pound the rock. I think that you need to establish play action early and like you said, those short passes and really just chew up like right in like that mid range zone and don't make any, like definitely don't make any dumb plays. I probably wouldn't target Trey white too often. And then from a jets defensive perspective, I would pressure the fuck out of Josh Allen, especially taking advantage of that right guard gap, because we all know who's going to be there. It's going to be winters pressure the shit out of them and double team Stefan Diggs. Dude, and that was kind of like the running yeah. joke of, uh, you yeah. know, amongst Jets fans was like, you know, the Jets offensive line last year, like the play was like awful, it was horrendous. Uh, you know, so we go out, we make moves, Beckton, McGovern, these guys. But the one guy who like was always, you know, he was, he was always like a staple on the Jets offensive line, like when the O-lines were bad, was Winters. And, you know, he did have one really solid season for us. It's not like he was just been like completely like garbage every single year. So yeah. we do have to pay homage for that season, but it is like, as a jet fan, like kind of funny that he just like immediately, immediately signed with you guys. And now he's yeah. just going to be like thrusted into a starting role. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. And so honestly, dude, yeah. Like um, that's, that is basically it. But I mean, say for example, that you guys do take digs away. Um, you still need to watch out for John Brown. Who's going to be going up against CB twos the rest of the year the same guy that racked up over a thousand yards receiving against very talented cornerbacks and CB ones of every team that he played. So, um, yeah. So, I mean, I think it's going to be an interesting matchup for sure. 
Yeah, dude, it definitely will be. I mean, divisional matchups are always like awesome to watch, especially on week one. But uh, yeah, dude, I appreciate you coming on, man. Uh, thanks so much. And for any Bills fans out there watching this or any you know Jets fans for that matter as well, if you guys don't know Dan, uh, huge Bills YouTuber, go check him out. His link will actually be uh, down below in the description box. So go check him out, subscribe to him. And uh, yeah, thanks so much for watching. And as always, go Jets.